Hello, everyone. Welcome to Backyard Musings, broadcasting live from Apple Valley. Good afternoon. I'm Steve. I'm Scott. Thank you for joining us today. Interesting story. Researchers found some uh, prey. They, they're calling it predator species, unknown before, way down at the bottom of the ocean, like 11,000 kilometers, like uh, eight miles. Maybe this was exposed to, due to one of their uh, their earthquakes. Every, it seems like every time we have an earthquake or a tsunami, some it, the prehistoric cracks open animal and comes up. Yeah, prehistoric animals yeah. come. Well, come in, out, so. in the in the story we're going to see, they actually had uh, they were looking for they baited the stuff oh. to catch it. Oh, and they caught it. So uh, never before seen. They're they're going to name it. This one is Japan that you're seeing on the screen right now. It's taken from the Japan, but we're going to talk about the one from Peru. During a twenty thousand twenty three sorry two thousand twenty three expedition. Scientists from the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, HOI, W-H-O-I, and the Millennium Institute of Oceanography, EMO, aboard the RV Abate, Abate Molina. Golly, man. Did you put these words in Abate, here? Abate, yeah. He used to be a really good soccer player that played for uh, AC Milan in a body. He was a good player. But hmm. anyway. Yeah, Abate Molina good. discovered a ghostly white, unusually large predatory amphipod which they named Dulcibella Camancha, Cam Camanchaca. Camanchaca. Sounds Thrive like a drink. Yeah, it does. Thr thriving. I, I wouldn't know anything about that, Scott. Sorry. What? No, you get them at 7 Eleven and Al Alcoholic and beverages. I wouldn't no, What do they call that? Horchata. That. Horchata. Oh, That's horchata. Horchata. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not, no, we're not talking about alcoholic <laughs> yeah. beverages. <laughs> You got your family watching these, man. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Dusabella Camanchaca thriving in the Atacama Trench, nearly five miles below the ocean surface, according to Live Science. That's a long way. That is a long way. Like the pressure down there. Remember the that submersible going to the ti uh, Titanic? It, it um, depressurized, just crushed in and killed everybody. Those, yeah, those, those people that were on there. Yeah. That just Yeah, that was just... Yeah, it's like they, they died before they and that wasn't knew anywhere it. near five miles deep. Right? No, no, not at yeah, all. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, the, the Atacama Trench, located about 160 kilometers off the coast of Peru and Chile, is one of. Say by the bell. <laughs> is one of Earth's deepest oceanic features, plunging to depths exceeding 26,000 feet, 8,000 8, meters, and stretching approximately 5,900 kilometers, 3,000 about 3,600 miles in length, as reported by the debrief. Would you like to know more? All right, strap in. Here we go. Uh, to explore these extreme deaths, si depths, scientists have deployed a special lander vehicle equipped with baited traps to collect specimens of ocean oceanic fauna. Oh, flora and fauna. Yeah. Uh, during the IDOOS expedition, Experts uh, retrieved four individuals of the large predatory amphipod from a depth of 7,902 kilometers. Meters. Meters. meters sorry. That's deep. Yeah. That's that deep. Is. That's uh, a little over. That's that's probably close to like, what, eight, 9,000 yards? 9,000 yeah. yards, right? Yeah. Okay. According to, uh, this is according to Science Times. The specimens were frozen and analyzed uh morphologically and genetically at the Instituto Milenio de Oceanografia uh, in Chile. The DNA analysis revealed that these, this species is new and belongs to an unknown genus as reported by Science Times. Okay, so we're going to uh, do this. We're going to advance the slide here. Just technology. Give me a second so here. So we were talking about this thing. It looks like a giant lobster. This one, this one is from Peru. The last one we we saw was from Chile. Oh, I gotta get us out of the picture there. Probably no color because it's so dark, right? I mean, so down so deep, it's got yeah. No, no, yeah, no eyes. It can't see. It just uses. Well, I don't think it smells, but uh, you know, sense sound probably the vibrations and stuff. And you know, who knows? These these could be the the start of uh, like leviathans. You know, it could be these could be the babies, and the mm. big one is lurking around the corner. You know, okay. This study's collaborative effort and integrative approach confirmed Dulcibella camanchaca as a new species, and highlights ongoing biodiversity discoveries in Atacama Trench," said Dr. Carolina Gonzalez, a co-lead author from IMO, who is responsible for sample collection and DNA analysis. 
The formal name of the newly discovered species is derived from the term for darkness in the languages of the Andes peoples, signifying the deep, dark ocean from where it preys. Andes. Have you ever had those little Andes mints, those chocolate and, and mint flavored candies? You no. never had those? Oh, man. I think I'm having a craving right now. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to get you some. Yeah. Those are really good. I appreciate anyway, that. Gonzales, uh, Gonzales described Dusabella Kamanchaka as having a slender and agile body that likely allows it to move easily along the seafloor. Like a lobster, right? Right. Its uh, front legs are large and strong, resembling pinchers, which are probably ideal for catching and holding prey. Additionally, it has robust teeth oh, in its jaws for oh. cutting and crushing food, oh. as well as legs lightly adapted for moving across different types of substrates. This amphipod is quite large for its size, uh, for its type, almost uh, four centimeters, 1.6 inches long. What? That's like that big, man. Yeah, come on. How is that giant? Uh, which likely helps it hunt, it hunt small prey, even though it lacks eyes. It can pop. It can probably rely on other senses to detect food in the pitch darkness of the ocean floor, she said. Come I on, producer. We, we wanted a giant, man, and you give us 1.6 inches? That's pretty small. Like I said, what if it's the little baby? You could squish and, it like a bug. And the Leviathan is off on the side. What is this? This is a little baby that they caught. And the could big be. one's out there. Could be. Huh. The Dusabella Camanchaca is the first known active large predator of its kind in one of the deepest oceanic zones. Predation is relatively rare in the Hadal zone, with most organisms scavenging on organic matter drifting from upper layers of the ocean or relying on chemosynthetic bacteria for nutrients, according to Newsweek. Dusibella Camanchaca stands, stands out for its specialized hunting abilities, actively playing, playing on smaller crustaceans and invertebrates in an environment where food is scarce. T tell us about the Hadal zones. Scott. Hadal zones, also known as Hadopelagic, Pelagic? Pelagic. Pelagic. Hadopelagic zones occupy only 0.25% of the ocean floor, That's but not account a lot. for deepest 45% of the ocean. That's a lot. That's a lot, yeah. Making them the deepest known and least accessible habitants home to some of the most unusual creatures on the planet. The term Hadal Megalodon. was uh, first proposed in 1956 by Anton Friedrich Brun to describe the parts of the ocean deeper than 6,000 meters, uh, which is about 20,000 feet, uh, leaving abyssal for the parts at 4,000 to 6,000 meters, which is about 13,000 to 20,000 feet, uh, named after the Greek god of the underworld, Hades, the Hadal uh, zone includes deep sea trenches and troughs. Life in these depths include unique species like amphipods, sea cucumbers, oh. and xenophyophores. Right? I got that. Yeah, xenophyophores. xenophyophores yeah. Which have evolved ad adaptations such as a, a soft, compressible bodies to withstand immense pressures, according to. Newsweek. Yeah, I just don't understand it. At that, that that pressure, how is a soft body gonna push back against the crushing pressures of deep? I don't mm -hmm. I don't get it, man. Another one of Heavenly Father's creatures. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell Crazy. you that. So in the slide that you're looking at, the right side is that uh creature, right? The left side is the uh it's like the trench. It shows you the different levels of the trench. Oh gosh, can I even read these? Um, mesopelagic, bathopelagic, abyssopelagic, and hato, hatopelagic. That's and you the can, deepest one, right? Yep. That's the one that's down in that trench. In the trench. So when you think you when you think of the seafloor floor, you think nice and smooth. It's yeah. not. It's just yeah. like up here, mountains, valleys, well, this all trenches. Used to be, this all used to be underwater. Yeah, it all used to be a giant ocean. So yeah. So um, so that in that trench there. Right wherever it is, over here. I don't know if you can see my mouse. That's where these things are living. Deep, deep, deep. Fascinating. Yeah. Fascinating, Mr. Spock. Okay, I'm going to take this off. No, I'll keep it on. Let's keep it on. Hadal zones lie within oceanic trenches in the range from 6 to 11 kilometers, just like Scott said, below sea level, and exist in long, narrow, topographic V-shaped depressions. Historically, the Hadal zone was not recognized as distinct from the abyssal zone. That that one doctor wrote that paper on it and 
differentiated, although the deepest ses- sections were sometimes called ultra abyssal. During the early 50s, Danish Galathea II and Soviet Vityaz expeditions separately discovered a distinct shift in the life at depths of six to 7,000 meters, not recognized by the broad definition of the abyssal zone. How did they get down this deep? Uh, How did they do probably that? Probably a special submersible, a very special submersible, so they didn't get crushed to death. But that that, just, I'm, it's fascinating that life yeah, that can live down I mean, there. Why, just the fact that they, they just came upon this thing. And why haven't, haven't we come upon it before? Uh, well, I bet they, they thought something was there and they put the traps out to see what it would, what it would get. And boom, that's what they got. I, I doubt they knew. Or they're just maybe fishing. You know, when you're deep sea fishing, you're fishing well, for whatever, that's right? deep, deep, deep. That's yeah. deep. Specifically yeah. targeting the trench. I yeah. guess they were trying Amazing. to see if anything's down there. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty That'd be cool, pretty, cool pretty cool stuff. If we could get down there routinely just to explore or mine the seafloor, you know, that would be interesting. Cause like yeah. Japan's going to learn how to do it. Oil deposits down there, you know. Yeah. Minerals, precious minerals. minerals. Yeah. The earth's full of them. Like you said, Heavenly Father set this planet up, it, you know, it's, yeah, it's, for us. Yeah. I mean, I would hope that he would have made it a little bit easier for it to force to get it. But man, that's pretty a wise, His ways are not our ways. That's his true. thoughts are not our that's thoughts. That's very true. You know, and if it was easy, everybody would do it. So. Right. You know, but, right. Okay, right. folks, uh, join us uh, tomorrow morning. We have an interesting segment on, uh, dang, I can't remember what the producers did it on. Um, but join us tomorrow morning. It's going to be interesting. We'll see you. Take care, everyone. Here we go. Yeah, so speaking about tomorrow.